If you're not able to retain clients, you will never be able to scale your agency. In this video, I'm going to give you seven proven strategies that we've implemented in our agency to lower churn, have unparalleled retention, and scale it to seven figures in annual revenue. Number one is by far the most important on this list, and that is to nail the onboarding process. I 100% believe that you should overcommit during the onboarding process to really research the brand, present a strong strategy roadmap, and assimilate and nail the brand's guidelines depending on what service that you're providing. Because from experience, if you don't get this portion of the project right, trust me, you're going to be pushing a boulder uphill, trying to get the client's trust back. More likely than not, they've already made a decision to cut their losses and they're proactively looking for a way out of the relationship. So it's really, really important to get the onboarding nailed down and make sure that you win the trust right from the very beginning. Even if you're not making money to month two, month three, trust me, to play a long game during this phase will significantly lower churn and make sure that you retain that client for the long haul. You're going to thank me on this one. Number two is something I believe so strongly in, and that is having a weekly meeting in the calendar. I've seen so many people across LinkedIn and Twitter, these agency gurus, recommend doing away with weekly meetings because they erode the profitability and it's another touch point that you have to have with the client. I think this is terrible advice. Weekly meetings, if they follow a very clear agenda and you don't fuck around talking about things like the weather, keep both yourself and the client accountable to delivering results, which is what they sign up for in the first place. So the key is with the weekly meetings to be very, very clear with the agenda, what you're going to discuss, make sure that you deliver value to the client, they have visibility into what is going on with the account and that you're able to chase them as well for anything they're being held up on. For example, if they haven't delivered assets for a specific campaign that you need to send out, having these weekly meetings in place creates accountability for both parties. And trust me, check the Loom video visibility out most clients just don't watch them. And if they're not watching the videos, then you're not able to demonstrate value. And then they're going to come back to you later down the line and ask you for things that you've already explained. So having weekly meetings in the calendar is something I just believe fundamentally is critical to strengthening the relationship over time and lowering churn. Number three is an obvious one, and that's just having great communication. I remember one of our previous employees used to drive me crazy because they would take so long to respond to the clients and I had visibility into the Slack channel. And it's not that I was a micromanager, but I just know from experience, if you're leaving a client for 48 hours waiting for a response, even if you're solving the problem in the background, that client is going to churn at some point because they're not happy with the communication. So if you do get a request come in and one person on your team is busy or yourself, you have other things that take priority, that's understandable, but acknowledge the request, give a very, very clear deadline for when you're going to deal with it and make sure it's added to your to-do list. Nothing drives a business owner more crazy than someone just ignoring the request that they've set up to pay for a monthly service. So you have to remember when they're paying you for a monthly service, they think that they're going to be your top priority. And even if you do have other things that take priority, all you need to do is acknowledge that the problem is being dealt with and then give them a clear date on when the problem will be solved. So communication is absolutely critical when you're running a service-based business to lowering churn. Number four has been a game changer for our agency, and that is delivering a weekly win every Monday. And I think this is really important if you're running an agency as well, because this makes sure that you're being accountable to what the client signs up for and that's delivering results. So one of the things that we do with our clients at Market Monster every single Monday is just drop a really quick update in the Slack channel. It could be an A-B test with interesting insights that we just ran. It could be the performance of a campaign over the previous week. It doesn't matter. Your job is to get value across from the services that you're delivering straight away to the client so that they have insights into what you're working on. Because remember, CEOs and heads of marketing, they are extremely busy with many things on their plate. So even if they are not following the project proactively, they will always check in and see these Slack messages from time to time. And that's going to accumulate and compound over time and build a positive impression in their minds. It's very, very hard to cut services with someone who's updating you with weekly wins on the account 
and showcasing positive progress. Number five is having a quarterly initiative roadmap. And this is something I just believe so strongly in and I also call an innovation spike. And when I look at our historical churn at Magnet Monster and even speaking to my friends who own agencies, a lot of the time churn just catches you by surprise. It's not that you've fucked up or done something wrong. It's that the client gets bored, they get shiny object syndrome, they're being pitched by another agency and they just want to try something new. And this is because if you're just doing the basics and getting by, eventually they're going to get bored and someone else is going to get their attention. So every quarter or even every month, I recommend bringing a new initiative to the client, having a very clear roadmap because ultimately, while they do sign up for results, the vision and the innovation that you drive on the account is a huge part of retaining them. And if you're not keeping the account exciting, then trust me, someone else is going to be pitching for that business with better ideas. They don't even need to execute. They're just selling the vision to the client that they might believe more strongly in than what you're able to deliver. So by having a repository of ideas, innovation, A-B tests, new software that you're going to implement on the account, that's going to keep them really excited and it's going to help lower churn. Trust me, this is a massive one, especially when you've been working with a client for a long period of time. Things can get stale. So by driving innovation, having a roadmap of new ideas, that's going to keep them happy and keep the wolves from the door. Number six is one that you might not expect, but that's having clear boundaries yourself. We've lost a lot of business at Market Monster, maybe in the beginning, because I was pushed around by clients and bullied by them to some extent. I thought by doing everything to please them, they would stay with me forever and they would never be able to leave. And while communication obviously is critical in making sure that you keep them happy, it's also a two-way street. If you let a client push you around and you give in to every request, then they're not going to respect you. And people don't want to work with people they don't respect. And this is like the same in any relationship in life. So just remember, you need to have very firm boundaries with the clients as well. It doesn't mean that you're being a dick to them, but it means that you need to set expectations and set a pattern of communication on what's acceptable. That way it works better for both parties because you're not being chased around by the clients for random requests. They know what to expect when working with you. That leads to consistency. It's very hard to break with consistency because no one likes to live in a world of chaos. I always say to our team, don't let clients pull you into their worlds of chaos especially CEOs, they're extremely busy, they've got tons on their plate, a lot of them are very disorganized. If you allow them to make you disorganized too, they're going to churn at some point. And finally, to finish number seven, clients sign up for results, you need to deliver them. Something that's so simple, but it's true and worth repeating that if you're not delivering results for clients, then ultimately it doesn't matter how good your communication is, whether you're experimenting on the account, whether you're a nice person or you're likable, results is what they sign up for especially if you're in the business of delivering performance-based services so just remember be really good at your craft and focus on delivering results and also critically like i've said in this video already show them the results that you're getting we've worked with brands before and done some really great work but the clients all of a sudden shares because they didn't have visibility and the type of results that they're getting and this is on us to demonstrate that value by implementing some of the advice and strategies that you've seen in this video. So that's it for this video. Seven strategies to lower client churn and skyrocket your retention. Hope this is helpful. If it is, hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Trying to release two new videos every single week to help you scale your agency. See you again soon.